will be barren of to find happiness we must seek out for it in a focus outside ourselves the room was empty except for the man who sat writing but for him it was filled with people and with voices help me or i'll come to side what the use of it all i'm lonely doctor i hate my job i have no time for friends w baron wolf had just passed his 30th birthday he was young as psychiatrist go but he was old with his agonies of other people he thought of the men and women who had come to him for help the bitter and the fated the angry and confused all of them desperately and happily and all of them seeking some tranquil adjustment to life his mind turned to actitius a humble greek slave in narrow room lane and poor but certainly content if a man is unhappy root apicitius remember that his unhappiness is his own fault for god has made all men to be happy how true that is the young psychiatrist reflected people are unhappy because they look inward instead of outward they think too much about themselves instead of think things outside themselves they worry too much about what they lack about circumstances they cannot change about things they feel they must have or must be before they can lead full and satisfying lives but happiness is not in having or being it is in doing that was a point we must emphasize and make clear in this book he was writing almost every human being could be happier at once if he realized this basic truth and accepted it he thought again of those ghostly malcontents crowding the corners of his rooms most of them had one trait in common a selfish, con- a selfish concept of life absorbed in their own interests and desires they failed in their human relationships and so created their own unhappiness he must make them realize that the only ambition consistent with happiness is the ambition to do things with and for others that the only way to find happiness is to look for it in a focus outside themselves he glanced again at the last three words he had written what is happiness there was no hesitation now he knew what he wanted to say the words came swiftly as he began to write if you want to know what happiness is we must seek it not as if it were a pot of gold at the end of rainbow but among human beings who were living richly and fully the good life if you observe a really happy man you will find him building a boat writing a symphony educating his son growing double dahlias in his garden he will not be searching for happiness as if it were a collar button that has rolled under the radiator he will have become aware that he is happy in the course of living 24 crowded hours of the day just as no one can be happy in work which is centered entirely about his own person and deals exclusively with the satisfaction of his own immediate needs so no one can be entirely happy in the social relations which focus only on himself and his immediate and narrow sphere of influences to find happiness we must seek for it in a focus outside ourselves if we live only for ourselves you are always in an immediate danger of being bored to death with the repetition of your own your own views and interests it matters little for psychological purpose whether you interest yourself in making your own your town cleaner or enlist in a campaign to rid your city of elect narcotics or whether you go in for boys club choose a movement that presents a distinct trend towards greater human happiness and align yourself with it no one has learned the meaning of living until he has surrendered his ego to the service of his fellow men if you pride yourself in your ambition take a mental inventory of its end and ask yourself whether you desire to attain those personal ends and forego the opportunities of being happy or whether you prefer to be happy and forego some of the prestige that your unfulfilled inferiority complex seems to demand if your ambition has the momentum of an express train at full speed if you can no longer stop your mad rush for glory power or intellectual supremacy 
Tag divert your energies into social usefulness channels before it is too late. For those who seek the larger happiness and the greater effectiveness open to human beings, there can be but one philosophy of life, the philosophy of constructive altruism. The truly happy man is always a fighting optimist. Optimist includes not only altruism but also social responsibility, social courage and objectivity. Man and woman who are compensating for their feelings of inferiority in terms of social services. Men and women who are vigorously affirming life, facing reality like adults, meeting difficulties with stoicism. Men and women who combine knowledge with kindliness, who spice their sense of humor with the just of living in a world. Complete human beings are to be found only in this category. The good life demand a working philosophy of active Philanthropy is an orienting map of conduct. This is the golden way of life. This is satisfying life. This is the way to be happy to you. The career of Dr. W. Baron Wall was tragically short. He died at 35, having in his brief lifetime helped many to a better knowledge and understanding of themselves and to a happier way of life. That influences continues perpetuated by the book which grew out of his practice and is based on his experience with unhappy maladjusted people. The paragraphs above are the most frequently quoted for the embody, embody his basic philosophy that the way to find happiness is not in the possession of material things or even in personal accomplishment but in doing things with and for others. Almost every human being can be happier than he is. Fruit W. Baron Wolf. One evening in the quiet of his studies, to those who desperately need such reassurance, which words bring the promises of hope and fulfillment. They have the same enduring quality as the famous phrase from Epictetus and inspiring today as it ever was. God has made all men to be happy. Unless we think of others and do something for them, we miss one of the greatest source of happiness. Read Lehman Brothers. To me, there is in happiness an element of self-forgetfulness. You lose yourself in something outside yourself. When you are happy, just as when you are desperately miserable, you are intensely conscious of yourself. Or a solid little lump of ego when the tongue gave you place. There is no happiness in having or in getting but only in giving handy down. I believe the root of all happiness on this earth to lie in the realization of spiritual thing life with a consciousness of something wider than materialism. In the capacity to live in a world that makes you unselfish because you are not over anxious about your personal space that makes you tolerant because you realize your own comic fallibilities that give you tranquility without complacency because you believe in something so much larger than yourself sir you Walpo. happiness is a perfume you cannot pour on others without getting a few drops on yourself Ralph Waldo Emerson now we will go for fourth lesson William S. Ogun happiness cannot be bought indeed money has every little to do with it High in the time building, which tower like a beacon above one of the busiest corners in the world. A newspaperman sat at his desk just being in this office again, hearing the busy clack of typewriters, feeling a part of pulsating life of a great newspaper, was shared this. William S. Ogun was home, he was a civilian again, in newspaper work again, and he was happy. In Hawaii, in Guam, through all those lonely months in the Pacific, William Logon had dreamed of New York and of the blessing and comfort of life in United States. A man gets to know what he misses when he is away from it. Now where in the world were people surrounded by so many opportunities and advantages? Now where in the world today could people be so happy and secure? That is how he had felt returning to America and he had expected to find his own intense feelings of pride, contentment, reflected in others. 
He was astonished to find anger and bitterness instead, to hear grumblings and complaints on every side. People had lost sight of their many blessings. They were uneasy and insecure without faith in future of the country and apparently without confidence in themselves. The whole emphasis seemed to be on material things, on money and the things money can buy and higher wages and shorter working hours, on personal gain instead of personal qualities and achievements. The sound of street traffic came to him, muted and gentle reminding him of the great city. All about him were the sharper overtones of typing and type talking, the shrill ringing of the telephone. He thought of the phrase that was being bandied about, what's the country coming to? No such things as security anymore. Why doesn't the government do something about it? Don't they realize the cynical disgruntled ones that happiness was not something that could be arranged officially, that it was not something people couldn't hand them? or they could buy for themselves. Didn't they realize they must have out their own destiny, destiny and fulfillment, make their own happiness? He had a column to write for topics of the time. Why not make this his subject? If there were ever a time to remind people of their blessing and us to stand on their own feet, this was it. He took out a sheet of paper and put it into his typewriter. There was never a time when so much official effort was being expended to produce happiness and probably never a time when so little attention was paid by the individual to creating the personal qualities that makes fight. What one misses most today is the evidence of widespread personal determination to develop a character that will in itself, given any reasonable odds, make for happiness. Our whole emphasis is on the reform of living conditions of increased wages of control on the economic structure, the government approach, and so little on man improving himself. The ingredients of happiness are so simple that they can be counted on one hand. Happiness comes from within, the rest most securely on simply goodness and clear conscience. Religion may not be essential to it, but no one is known to have gained it without a philosophy resting on ethical principle. Selfishness is its enemy. To make another happy is to happy oneself. It is quite seldom found for long in crowds. Most easily, one in moments of solitude and reflection, it cannot be solved. About, indeed, money has very little to do with it. No one is happy unless he is reasonably well satisfied with himself. So that the question for tranquility must be necessity begin with the self-examination. We shall not often be content with what we discover in this secure scrutiny. There is so much to do and so little done. Upon the searching self-analysis, however, depends on discovery of those qualities that make each man unique and whose development alone can bring satisfaction. Of all those who have tried down the ages to outline a program for happiness, few have succeeded so well as William Henry Cheney chaplain of the House of Representatives in the middle of the last century. To live content with small means, to seek elegance rather than luxury and refinement rather than fashion to be worthy, to study hard, think quietly, talk gently, act frankly, to listen to the stars and birds, to babes and saints with open heart, to bear all cheerfully, to do all bravely, await occasions Hurry never in a word to let the spiritual unbidden and unconscious grow up through the common. It will be noted that no government can do this for you. You must do it for yourself. William Morgan column appeared on the editorial page of the New York Times on December 30, 1945 under the title The Art of Happiness. The response was immediate and unmistakable. Let's begin to point and it was soon apparent that Readers had found something unusually helpful and stimulating in Mr. Owen Masses. The truth is that people needed a reminder like the art of happiness. They needed to be told that greed and selfishness destroy peace of mind and that those who seek happiness in material things really find it. It took the wholesome perspective of newspaper man who had been away from his desk for four years, who could see through the tension and confusion of the times to the basic lasting value of life to help others.
see straight and think clearly again. The art of happiness has a quality of truth and sincerity that keep it alive. It has been reprinted many times since its first appearance in a newspaper column. It has helped many achieve a happier, more tranquil way of life. Much happiness is overlooked because it doesn't cost anything. What a man is contributes much more to his happiness than what he has. What a man is in himself, what accompanies him when he is alone. What no one can give him or take away is obviously more essential to him than everything he has in the way of possession or even what he ha- what he may be in the eyes of the world, Arthur Scopanuel. Money may buy the husk of things but not the kernel. It brings you food but not the appetite, medicine but not health, acquaintances but not friends, servants but not faithfulness. Days of joy but not peace or happiness handicaps me. The greedy search for money or success will almost always lead men into unhappiness. Why? Because that kind of life makes them depend upon things outside themselves and in Mauritius. Men cannot live by bread alone. The making of money, the accumulation of material power, is not all there is to living. Life is something more than these. The man who misses the truth misses the greatest joy and satisfaction that can come into his life service for others, Edward Bach. It is good to have money and the things that money can buy, but it's good to check up once a while, make sure you have not lost the things that money can't buy, George Horikwamo.